Good morning. I'm Jonathan Lee Walton, and it's an honor to greet you from the beautiful campus of Wake Forest University, where I have the privilege of serving as Dean of the School of Divinity. Our graduates are in ministry across this country doing incredible things, but it's a special treat to acknowledge Reverends Katie and John Calloway co-pastors of the historic First Baptist Church of Savannah, a congregation where everyone is welcomed, everyone is accepted, and everyone is loved. You are proof that a community can be traditional and vibrant, faithful and inclusive, and we thank God for you. This Sunday's lectionary text comes from the third chapter of 1 Kings. God says to the new king Solomon, ask me what I should give you. And Solomon said, you've made me king in place of my father David. Though I'm just a little child, I do not know how to go out or to come in. Therefore, give me an understanding heart so that I might govern your people, that I might understand between good and evil. And then God said, because you have asked for wisdom over long life or riches, not only will I give you a wise and a discerning heart, I will also give you great wealth and all the desires of your heart. My friends, throughout history and across cultures, we hold wisdom in high regard. The ancient Egyptians worshiped Maat, the goddess of truth, justice, and balance. The Greeks had Sophia, wisdom's personification and the beginning of all knowledge. Aristotelian ethics professes that phronesis, practical wisdom, is all of the virtues personified. And among the Swahili in East Africa, wisdom is wealth, the sort of wealth that can never be consumed but only shared. This is why history has held up King Solomon as a moral paragon of virtue. King Solomon reigned in the early 10th century before Christ, and today's scripture lesson has come to define at least half of his legacy. When offered a blank check by God, Solomon did not ask for a long life. Solomon neither asked for fortune nor fame, but rather realizing the limitations of his cognitive capacity and deficiencies of discernment, Solomon searched his soul. He considered the task before him as he prepared to replace his father, David, on the throne. And Solomon just had one request. Give me an understanding heart so that I might discern between good and evil. In many ways, Solomon's initial response to God represents the appropriate posture we should all assume when time to confront life's challenges. He assumed a posture of profound humility. He understood that before he could rise to meet the challenge of being king, he had to be honest about his own inadequacies. This is what it means to be a responsible adult. This is what it means not to just be happy, but to be a healthy leader. Humility. Oh, it's a leadership trait that I think is undervalued in our society. It cuts against the grain of tough guy expectations. It's inconsistent with our current selfie, look at me orientation. Now today, like the words of Paul, poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar in a different context, too many of us would rather wear the mask. Well, one prominent leadership expert suggests that there are two ways, two main ways in which leaders wear masks. Some of us conceal our deficiencies behind a polished facade. We act as if we have it all together. Others of us assume another's 
persona based upon some ideal of what we assume a leader to be. We put on the costume of that celebrity, that coworker, that classmate that we think has it all together. All the while, we deprive ourselves of the relationships and lessons that we need to become more effective, more trustworthy, and thus more accomplished based upon the gifts that God gave us. We fail to cultivate our own unique talents. We fail to see that being authentic is far more important than appearing excellent. Becoming better is more valuable than performing perfection. The humble pursuit of wisdom, however, is not the only lesson that we can learn from Solomon. There is indeed a tradition that exalts Solomon as the epitome of wise leadership. But wisdom is also a contested category. There was a robust professional class of sages in ancient Israel that many viewed with suspicion. The truly wise knew that smartness and expertise was a two-sided coin. And as Solomon life also proves, this kind of power in the human hands can just as well lead even the best of us on a path to destruction. Maybe this is why the Hebrew prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah often attacked the professional class of people in society that regarded themselves as wise. Recall that those uh, who wrote the creation narrative, uh, that they depict the serpent as wise and crafty. The serpent promised Adam and Eve that they will know the difference between good and evil. It's interesting that the writer of Solomon's narrative and the Adam and Eve account, they actually use the exact same language. The serpent tempts Adam and Eve with the ability to discern between good and evil. So though Solomon might be an example of humble leadership, Solomon might also be an example of vain temptation. For the very moment that we think of ourselves, we as finite, limited creatures, that we think that we have become the arbiters of all knowledge, our garments of humility can become the conspicuous accoutrements of hubris. The same wax wings of ingenuity that allowed Icarus to fly high ended up melting from the heat of the sun. As our nation reels from the intense heat of a global pandemic, as our communities melt from rising unemployment and increased isolation, God is calling all of us to be wise and thoughtful frontline responders. At times like this, we're tempted to shrink into our tribes. Without positive examples, we can easily devolve to our worst egoist impulses of bias and bigotry. But God is calling us today. God is calling us to be bigger, to love bolder, to care stronger, to give freer, to reach inside of ourselves deeper so that we can bend down lower in love and service. For we already know what is wise and good, to do justice, love and mercy, and walk humbly before our God. One love.